Hey guys, it's Hink here. I came across some pretty exciting data that I want to break down with you today. I think it has some significant implications as far as how we do PE and what we might be able to add to our routines to potentially make them more effective and also potentially help stimulate more gains. Also, if you have any kind of Peyronie's disease or fibrosis of the penis, this might also be very helpful for you. And so we're going to break that down today. The paper that we're going to be breaking down is called Vacuum Erection Device Plus Once Daily Tadalafil Improved Clinical Outcomes After Extracorporeal Shockwave Therapy. Those of you that know me know that there's a couple of things I like. Pumping, Tadalafil, and of course research. We're already like three for three, and then we're adding in shockwave therapy. Guys, if you haven't seen my video on shockwave therapy, I actually even tried using a shockwave therapy device. You should check it out. But this was a recent paper published in September of this year, which actually breaks down some very important components of basically what we use for penile elongation. And there's a lot of things that I actually learned reading this paper that I want to bring to the light. So to start out in the introduction section, before I go any further, guys, the link to this paper will be in the description. Callie's going to put it in there. You guys should try to find this paper and read it yourself and make your own conclusions. Please don't blindly listen to this video and just think that I'm trying to tell you how to think. This is my interpretation and the parts that I picked out from it, okay? You guys need to do the same. But in the introduction, they talk about Peyronie's disease and they say, the causes are unknown, but the dominant theory concerns recurrent microtrauma to the corpus cavernosa during sexual intercourse. What does this remind you of? You guys doing PE that are basically PE elongation, doing this pulling, tugging, stretching, clamping, pumping, that is causing microtrauma, guys. And so, yes, you are at a increased risk of potential microtrauma, which could lead to things like Peyronie's disease or scarring or plaguing. That's why I have so many videos on safety and ways to basically offset that, which we're going to talk about later. But it is important that they bring this up once again. They also talk about how shockwave therapy works. And guys, there's a lot of different ways that shockwave therapy can work in theory. But in this paper specifically, they talk about how the mechanical stimulation of the waves on the cellular tissues induces a cavitation effect with the generation of nitric oxide and vascular endothelial growth factor. The increased nitric oxide and the VEGF can actually help with promoting healthy tissue in the penis. And recovering uh, some of the blood flow from what we call revascularization or neovascularization. They also talk about traction therapy. Now, what I don't like in this paper is they are basically equating traction therapy, meaning using something like an extender or hanging with vacuum erection devices. And so they're basically saying that, you know, putting your D in an extender for, you know, sometimes several hours is basically the same as using a vacuum erection device. And so they kind of like jump back and forth but in this, they talk about traction therapy is theorized to work by the mechanism where repeated traction extends fibrinous plaques, okay, so specifically in Peyronie's disease, by reorganization of the extracellular collagen matrix. What that means, guys, is the tunic albigeny, the, the fibrous sheath of your penis that is actually responsible for the size of your penis, it is a collagen matrix as well. And so if they're saying that you can use traction therapy and that's going to actually help to change the collagen matrix. That is literally what we want to do when we're talking about penile elongation and expansion by enlarging it. So guys, this was not a randomized trial. So we're getting into the methods here. What they did is they, they did have two different groups of guys. And this was actually a retrospective trial. So it wasn't even like they had these groups and looked moving forward, which is called a prospective trial. I'm not trying to educate you guys, but it, whatever. In the first group, group A, they had 72 men that had shockwave therapy, mechanical stretching through the vacuum erection device, and then the Tadalafil, okay? Five milligrams daily. And then group B was the same, but there was no vacuum erection device used. The shockwave therapy was done in six-week cycles, and so it was basically done once a week for six weeks, and it was 3,000 shockwaves addressed to the major penile plaques, okay? Now, guys, please watch my video on shockwave therapy or anybody's video on shockwave therapy, but there's major differences between basically low-intensity shockwave therapy and radio wave therapy. And I'll have Kelly put up a picture here, but they can, the radio wave therapy is traditionally far less effective. And so I don't want you to watch this video and then think that you can just go out and buy a shockwave device on Amazon and it's going to be the same as some of the ones in the clinical practices. And even like the Phoenix device is a mix of low intensity shockwave therapy and radio waves. So you need to be very aware because it's not created equal. And guys, like, of course, here's what I really don't like is when they talk about the vacuum erection device, they just say 10 minutes twice a day. I do actually like the twice a day. 
for three months, which was combined with uh, Tadalafil, five milligrams, basically daily. They don't talk about what pressure was used. They don't talk about if you should use a warm-up set, if it's two sets of five minutes, how much time is in between the two sets. They just say, yeah, you know, you use this generic pump, put it on there, inflate your D for 10 minutes twice a day. Please, if you haven't seen my videos on pumping, like I break down everything from what's the pressure that's ideal based on the data that we have. I have the ideal set times and even how long in between the actual sets matters according to the different studies that they've done. All of this stuff is actually very important because you can have far different results. Now, once again, this study is not looking at enlargement. It's looking at improving erection quality and also Peyronie's disease symptoms. But it is important to have that criteria. You can't just say, use a vacuum erection device. There's so much more to it. So what they did was evaluated the results at three, six, and 12 months in the different groups in this study. Now it's always important to talk about adverse effects. Okay guys, here's a nice chart here where you can see the different effects that they had. There was no significant difference between the groups. So by adding on a vacuum erection device, it did not increase the rate of any kind of adverse effects. So that is kind of, that is very important to know because I talk about how I think that pumping is one of the safest ways that you can do PE as long as you don't have one of those devices where you just like put it on your pelvis and like shove it in and shoot the water out if you know what I'm talking about. If you have a high quality pump, of course, like what you can find on Peak Male Physique, regardless, an air pump that has a gauge where you can actually measure the pressure and gradually pump it up, those are very safe in general. Okay, nothing's foolproof, but those are very safe. But interesting, they talk about neuropraxia. This is of course from the shockwave therapy, but guys, Neuropraxy is basically an injury to your peripheral nerves. And some of the guys, we call it nerve damage, like when, you, when you're doing it from PE. Just the fancy term is called neuropraxy, and it typically goes away on its own. But even just from doing the shockwave therapy in these fairly low numbers of patients, you still had 1% of patients, that's 1 in 100 patients, basically, over that, that, that did end up experiencing symptoms from this. So once again, nothing is foolproof, but that is from the shockwave therapy. And so if you look at the results here in this chart, you can see that the actual plaque size, there was no difference for three months. But then when you looked at the six months and 12 months later, there was a significant decrease in plaque size when you added in the vacuum erection device in addition to the shockwave therapy and the Cialis. When you look at penile curvature, a similar thing. There was no difference before, no difference at three months. But then once you start to get six to 12 months after, that's when you start to see the difference. There was no difference in the pain and the erection between the two groups. But what you did see from the very beginning is that at three months, six months, and 12 months, there is a significant benefit as far as the International Index of Erectile Function, the IIEF. So basically how good your erectile function is immediately improved with the inclusion of the vacuum erection device. And so once again, guys, like I, I even have a recent video talking about how pumping the actual mechanisms behind why it can actually improve erectile quality. But that's one of the reasons why I'm such a strong proponent for pumping because of the overall benefits in penile health even if we're not talking about size we're not talking about temporary size just the erectile quality benefits is worth pumping to me personally figure out if it's worth it for you talk to your doctor about it what are some of the conclusions from this paper well one of the main conclusions of the regular it so guys what are some of the takeaways from this paper well one of the main conclusions is and i quote the regular use of a vacuum erection device plus tadalafil in patients who undergone eswt so shockwave therapy significantly provided benefit in patients with Peyronie's disease as far as penile deformity pain and erectile function so of note, guys, the discussion part of this is really interesting because some of the research that they use to actually back their claims, for lack of a better word, is actually contradictory to their findings. And so they even talk about how in shockwave therapy, the exact molecular mechanism of action isn't exactly known. And in fact, in some of the randomized placebo-controlled trials, they did not show an improvement in plaque size when shockwave was used. So any of my guys that have Peyronie's disease, don't just run out and consider doing shockwave therapy by through either urology's office or getting your own unit because the data out there is actually conflicting as far as that alone. That being said, I do think that there is the potential for potentially increasing the remodeling of the actual collagen, which over time, like they saw in this paper, no difference at three months, but over six and even 12 months could lead to potential improvements and gains as far as increased collagen remodeling. They also talk about some pretty interesting mechanisms when it comes to the vacuum erection device. Now, I'm actually going to be doing another video on one of the other papers that I found in here that was pretty interesting 
but they start talking about this. They say continuous traction devices, such as penile vacuum erection devices. And so once again, if, if you are asking me, what is a continuous traction device? A pump is not a continuous traction device. Now, how am I defining that? You know, whatever. It's, it's up to the person using it to define it. But I think of continuous traction being like 30 minutes of steady tension and not just 10 minutes of exposure to a vacuum. However, you know, it is in many instances continuous traction for that 10 minutes. So I'm not super upset with that, but I don't love how they how they kind of equate the two because I think an extender and pumping for 10 minutes, very, very different things. However, they say, such as penile vacuum erection devices, employ their effects by increasing the activity of degrading enzymes. So you guys may have heard me talk about matrix metalloproteinases before or MMPs. And so that's those are the things that actually, depending on the signal, like I talk about it in my heat video, can actually come in and help denature some of the collagen and allow it to expand. But they say that uh, this initial loss of tissue strength and the Peyronie's disease plaque becomes solvable and degraded. This process is followed by an increase in newly synthesized collagen. So all of these things are directly related to penile enlargement because you want to break down your existing collagen and ultimately create new collagen to expand. And so once again, this is giving scientific evidence of the potential pathway through which Enlargement is not only possible, but actually ex explaining how it how it happens. Now, as far as tadalafil, I don't really talk about anything sexy. I mean, you guys have seen, please see my other videos about the benefits of PDE5 inhibitors. But they also talk about how tadalafil may play a, a the main role in stabilizing penile curvature and plaque fibrosis. Okay, once again, it may play. This is not definitive answer here, but it is very interesting. So guys, one of the flaws is this is not a randomized trial. And in fact, more of the men in group A had worse erectile function. And so because they had worse erectile function starting off, there was potentially more room for improvement with different interventions. And guys, for, all, for everybody out here trying to make conclusions for like PE or penile enlargement, this is not a one-to-one -one study, guys. This is looking at Peyronie's disease. We're talking about enlarging a normal penis, okay? So just take the study with a grain of salt. And one of my biggest flaws is that they, they don't in any way mention either flaccid, erect, or stretched flaccid length. That would be so huge if they could have mentioned if there was any increase in size. Now, having just an improvement in erection quality is going to increase the size of the erect penis. So I can guarantee you that the guys that underwent basically the group A treatment with the, the tri-modality treatment, let's call it, ended up with a larger erect penis than the other guys did because of the erection improvements. But unless you have that data, it's speculation. So what are my takeaways? Well, guys, before I get to the takeaways, just take a second, leave a thumbs up on this video. It means a lot. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing if you like these science-based videos. But I think that this is a slow burn. And what I mean by that is I think potentially if you regularly use shockwave therapy, not over the course of three months, maybe not six months, but when you get to that nine to 12 month, I think that you could potentially have a slight increase in potential collagen remodeling and maybe increase in size by adding in shockwave therapy. That being said, guys, like I have a Phoenix device. It's like loud. It hurts my ears and it takes significant amount of time and effort. I am not going to do that. Even if this paper proved without a doubt that adding shockwave did something, I would still probably not do it just from a time and logistical perspective. And some of you guys, probably most of you guys still can't believe I bought it, but can't afford to buy just like a $900 shockwave device and probably the shockwave at the urologist office is even more expensive. So I don't know how practical these results translate to kind of like your average guy. I definitely think that combining all three can potentially help keep your penile tissue healthier overall and improve your erection quality. But once again, this, this data is looking at reversing a plaque. Now, for all we know, adding a shockwave, adding that additional micro trauma through the shockwave mechanisms could potentially increase the risk of injury if you are pumping, clamping, tugging, extender. Like, this is pretty mild stuff, guys. You, the only thing they did PE-related was just using a vacuum erection device for 10 minutes. So we don't know the implications of shockwave therapy. And as far as I know, there haven't been any studies done looking at combining an extender with shockwave therapy. But it is still promising data, in my opinion. It's also reassuring that that many of the things that I've talked about, like the benefits of vacuum erection devices or pumping as far as the nitric oxide benefits, as far as the penile health, as far as like increasing flaccid size. Well, maybe not the, you know, the, the size they don't really talk about, but all of these things I've talked about before, as far as the healthy benefits of pumping are all talked about in this paper. 
Similarly, the benefits of Cialis are also talked about in this paper, which guys, like I said, I have so many videos on that. So it's always very validating when these principles that I talk about are once again backed by clinical research and, you know, whatever. I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I just don't know a lot of other people or anybody else that is truly taking like scientific data and applying it one to one and not just like leaps and bounds from like looking at Achilles tendons, which I do that from time to time too, guys. But I do think that this is a very thought-provoking paper. I want to know what you guys think. Is this changing the way that you do PE? Does this kind of, you know, is this a game changer for you or is this more like a status quo update? Either way, let me know what you think. All the comments help the algorithm. And is anybody going to try adding shockwave therapy in now? Maybe you have access to a Phoenix device like I do. I'm not going to lie. I was actually going to sell my Phoenix device to the, to my guy, uh, MC Rez. He asked for it. And uh, I think I'm going to hold on to it now just while I kind of explore a little bit more of this shockwave data. So that'll do it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Um, if you are looking for any supplements that can help to keep you safe and support your PE journey, please consider our Vigor, okay? Amazon Choice bestseller that helps support your endothelial cells and helps support erection function. We have our Safeguard, which is going to help protect against fibrotic processes and help support that whole process of keeping your soft tissue safe. And then of course our shield, which supports healthy nerve function, especially when we're talking about those sensitive nerves in the penis. And of course, guys, if you're looking for basically my recommendations based on the, the science that I've learned on how to get bigger, including basically how I put on the size that I did, which was over an inch and a half in length and over an inch in girth. Of course, my course is available below. Links are in the description. All the ways to support my fabulous editor, Callie, are also there as well. I appreciate you guys. Remember guys, be the best version of yourself, whatever form that might be, just be the very best version of yourself. There's nothing wrong with self-improvement, but you are enough just as you are. All right, guys, peace and love. Dr. Hank got the plug on the health, yeah. Got you thinking about your wealth, yeah. In his office, no stealth, yeah. Pinnacle of that below the belt, yeah. Checks and balance, he's managing. Working miracles, no damage. Got you covered, no panic. Can't stay calm. In the clinic, no vanishing.